Today we are talking SD-WAN. We're going to step through VPN, MPLS, and then we're going to deep dive into SD-WAN. And this is a Tech Talk. All right, we're back and I've got Chris Marshall, the man, the myth, the legend. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Nice to be here. Yeah, we're going to be doing some SD-WAN. The first thing that we're going to do is, what are we going to do? We're going to drop some, uh, drop an MPLS and a DMVPN. Is that what we're thinking? Well, we've got a whiteboard here, so I guess we might as well use it. Let's get drawing. All right. All right, so we got our drawings all done. We drew up... I took the DMVPN and Chris did the MPLS and obviously his MPLS looks better than my DMVPN. Oh, not but, about that. But, all right, so you want to take us through uh, MPLS because this is a tried and true provider WAN. Yep, it, it, the, this is the expensive one, right? So this is our private circuit. Um, so traditionally this is, you know, here I'm showing a single cloud, so it's a single provider. Um, traditionally, so we have our CE, that's our, our customer edge, and our provider edge is the PE, and then we just have our internal provider routers. So these are generally like BGP free. Um, and they so do all the switching between like... They do all the switching, that's yeah. right. So okay. um, so each of our, this is a single customer. We right. have a, a prefix A, a prefix B at site two there, and a, a prefix C. And we're basically exchanging those routes with our provider. So we're actually giving them access to our routing table. So uh, we have a BGP peering here. Uh, that could be OSPF, but it traditionally, I think, you know, 99% of the time you're going to see a BGP peering. Uh, that's how we talk to our provider. And we're actually giving them all of our local subnets and exchange, they're giving us uh, our remote subnets back to us. So the provider has complete access to our, uh, to obviously to all of our uh, our subnets, can see our network traffic, it's not encrypted. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. And also obviously you're locked in, you have a single provider. So I can have a another MPLS cloud down here, but um, I'm gonna, you know, site B has to be on that same cloud. So. Right. We're locked, so everywhere if we want to exchange information, we're going to have to be with that same provider. So, but obviously the pros, you know, we are we're paying for this, but we do get some guaranteed delivery. So the right. provider is doing some QoS for us. So and they that's, are, that's end to end, end to end QoS they carry. In right, exactly. So for our voice traffic, you know, we want to protect that. Maybe we give it a meg or so, and that's high priority, low latency, end to end. So you know, guaranteed performance. Um, the negatives, like I say. Um, it's, it can be expensive, so you know per megabyte you're going to pay. Generally, you're going to pay a lot more for this. Uh, lead times on circuits when you open up a new site can be painful. Um, you know, sort of three to six months is, is not unheard of. Um, but like you say, it's 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 uh, tried and tested, um, and, and it's it's worked well for us for the last ten years or so, I'd say. And this is uh, this architecture is you would consider it like multi-tenant, right? Because one provider can service multiple customers off of this PE, right? And yeah, I mean, under the hood, obviously, they've really got VRF, so they've got separate okay. routing tables. So obviously, yeah, because, you know, we're all using RFC 1918 address space, so uh, chances are that company A and company B are gonna have some overlap there. So they do keep our, our routes separate from them, but we are obviously putting our faith in, the, in their systems that, you know, they don't leak our routes to anyone else. Um, but yeah, so, so we have a dedicated space in their, their routers for our routing information, basically. Awesome. So that covers our multi-protocol label switching network. Mm. You like that? Yeah, that's it. You got it. I yeah, that's it. I yeah, pulled that yeah. out of the archives. All right. So let's slide over here to the dynamic multi-point virtual private network network. Oh, very good. Yep. <laughs> I see you've been practicing your anagrams. Yep. Ah, well, you know, doing, doing what I can with what I got. So essentially, uh, we've got uh, GRE tunnel to a hub, hub, and obviously there's multiple architectures for DMVPN, dual hub, dual mm -hmm. cloud, all of that. But for today, in explaining this, we've got a single hub, GRE, uh, GRE tunnels from each of the sites. They're using some type of NHRP to resolve the public IP addresses. They're setting up their VPNs uh, autom automatically, hopefully. And then if these, if if this side wants to talk to this side, the first packet's going to go up to the hub, and the second packet, if we allow it, would uh, dynamically build a point-to-point -point tunnel. So this gives you that MPLS-esque like feel. So you know. It's every connection goes direct, so good for voice, low latency traffic. 
uh, that would go point to point as opposed to going through a hub, hub and spoke type architecture. So you get the benefits of an MPLS like feel without the potential cost and the flexibility of provider agnostic type connections. So, um, so yeah, uh, provider A, provider B, I could have even provider C, B could all be in the same provider. So you get some, uh, I guess, just selection and whatever's available to you at that particular site, as long as it's good bandwidth, low latent, that's really all you care about. Boom. All right, so let's flip this board over and let's get to SD-WAN while everybody probably w is watching this video. So let's, uh, we're gonna flip over the whiteboard and do a little bit more drawing. All right, so this is where we've come from. Let's, let's go to the future. Let's get to the future. It's beautiful. All right, so you drew it up. What do we got? So again, so now we're looking at, I've kept it to two sites to kind of keep it as simple as possible, not, not to go too crazy with the uh, the interlinks. But you know, what we're looking at here, the, the key thing is we have our cloud hosted control plane. So I've got the, the V managed, you know, represented by the, the M and the circle here. Uh, a V smart, which is really the brain, the brains of the solution. So our management platform is V manage. Our, our, uh, our routing control policy platform is vSmart. And we have DTLS, so these little pink lines here, that's kind of, these are permanent uh, control plane connections. So out of path, uh, we're talking to, to vSmart, and this is how we're exchanging our routing information. We actually, oh, so the routing protocol information gets transferred through this. Yeah, so this is kind of, so when we think of, you know, similar in a way to, to what we saw with the DMVPN where we had the hub, okay. um, the difference here is that no data traffic would, would so if you think of vSmart in a way, kind of like um, your next hop server or your hub in a DMVPN network, Got it. uh, it's doing the routing component. Uh, obviously there's a lot more to this as well. It's not just sharing prefixes, it's actually sharing IPsec keys as well. So that's something the that key about this solution is, um, is it's ICLA. So, we're, so the, you know, we can see here with our green tunnels, this is still IPsec, but as far as that authentication piece and actually creating those encryption keys, that's actually it's actually done through vSmart and shared mm -hmm. this way. So we don't have to run those kind of resource intensive uh, Diffie-Hellman uh, and, number. And so they're not doing any key, ex ICLA is a no key exchange, it's just giving the keys. The keys are actually an attribute of the route, yeah. So we're sharing, so OMP, so we have DTLS, uh, so that's encrypted, obviously authenticated using certificates. The, the whole solution, so again, no pre-shared pre -shared keys in this solution. It's all certificate based. Okay. Um, so our encrypted uh, control plane tunnel up to vSmart, okay. we run a protocol inside that, a proprietary one, a new routing protocol, OMP. So we've got a, no, a new uh, acronym to add to our, uh, so that's overlay management protocol. I know you love an acronym, Sean. I, I so they, so you, that's another one for it. So yes, so the key there is it becomes a lot more scalable. We are building permanent VPN tunnels between our, over our transport. So I didn't really put our transport names in here, but this, it's, it's transport independent. So we don't really care. This could be internet one and internet two, or it could be, you know, this could be a private circuit or say MPLS, or it could be Metro Ethernet. You know, and this is gonna be, you know, uh, our old friend, the internet here. Okay. Um, so yes, so we're, we've built our control planes, we exchange our routing information, so our prefixes in this case, A, is shared up to vSmart, and then shared down here. Um, and obviously to reach A, I know that I have to go to, uh, via, I can reach it via either this VPN or this VPN. Now you notice, we, inside the VPN, I did like a little orange dotted line here. Yeah. And, that, and that's actually, again, this is another standard one, BFD. So I don't know if you know the... Uh, Bidirectional forwarding detection? Very good, very good, yeah. So so as we bring up our IPsec tunnels, we, we run BFD and that's, we're actually running it in echo mode. Um, so it's a UDP packet. Hello. Hello. So, so that's actually measuring that the path liveliness. So we, we can get statistics on packet loss, latency and jitter. And we can use that, we share that information up to, so we see the dotted line up to vManage. That's where we're sharing our statistics through. So vManage can then share that with vSmart that says, hey, uh, maybe this application can't have loss of over 2%. Don't use that path. Got so adding a layer of intelligence into the network. Yeah, traffic. So traffic engineering, really. And again, you kind of think back. Well, how would you know? How would we have done this? Policy the routes. Old policy based routing. You know, IP SLAs. It could be done, but very messy. You've got to touch all the boxes. Um, an absolute nightmare to administer. This. You've got one central place. Yeah, policies are created here. They're pushed. They're very flexible. We can make uh, full mesh, partial mesh, hub and spoke. 
Um, and also another thing we didn't mention is you probably see I say here VPN one VPN. Actually, that should be VPN one as well. Oh, we got the wrong VPN. Oh my goodness. Here I can get my finger in there. Oh, that's good. There you go. One. So we can have, yeah, what they call, so on our LAN side, we have VPNs, and that's where our traditional prefixes live, and this is to do with the segmentation. So think VRF in your traditional router. Mm -hmm. um, so VPN1 can only talk to, to VPN1 at a remote site, and we actually carry that label in the data plane. So nice. as it arrives over here, it says, hey, you know, this route is for VPN1, I can share that. So I could have, I could have overlapping subnets if I have a VPN2 okay. here, so we can do some multi-tenancy if we want to do that ourselves. We can also segment as well, like our wireless network, uh, keep that traffic completely separate, you know, pull it back to a, a main data center and we can do our scrubbing and, and all kind of security stuff there as well, so. That's awesome, can, can we, so just to pause real quick, so to take us back to just the overlay technology, so essentially, these transports, these are transports, so we have an internet transport and MPLS. Mm -hmm. Then we build, very similar to the DMVPN architecture, we build some type of overlay VPN tunnel. Right. And that's going to be full mesh or partial mesh, depending on our, tech, our architecture, mm -hmm. right? Over every single transport mechanism, whether it's MPLS, internet, a, third, a second internet connection, a second MPLS, you know, if you had multiple transports, it would build a tunnel over each transport. Yes, so we, we didn't really talk about this guy up here, that's uh, the B, and that stands for V-Bond. Um, and uh, so we don't have a permanent DTLS connection to that device, and that's why I've not drawn it here. But when we do boot up our V-Edges, which I should say these, these blue squares, that's what they are, or, I mean, now they could obviously be an ISR 4K, for example, okay. with, with SD-WAN software. But our, our SD-WAN router, when it boots up, its first point of contact is this V bomb. So uh, part of our sort of bootstrap configuration will be a, a you know fully qualified domain name to our V bond. I should also mention as well these components are all obviously re redundant. So we have a, we have two or three or four V V bonds and V smarts. But obviously just for simplicity of this diagram, we kept it to one. Um, so anyway, like I say, first point of contact. We talk to V bond. It authenticates us using certificates, just like everything else in the uh, in the architecture. But it also says, hey. Mr. Mr. SD WAN router, you are sitting behind that, or you are not sitting behind that. And also, here's what you need to speak to vManage and vSmart. So it's the director, it's the coordinator, the orchestrator. Very similar, if you think about that NHRP role in a DMVPN network, um, I would say it's a, a similar kind of function there. With a little bit more intelligence. With a little, well, with, uh, a, lot with yeah. <laughs> yeah. a lot more intelligent. Okay, cool. And so, so we talked a little bit about the transports. We talked about the overlay. We talked about uh, V Manage, V Smart. Uh, what else on SD WAN should we be uh, covering? Well, I think we, we got like we got the segmentation piece, uh, the, the, the the flexibility with traffic engineering, centralized uh, out outside of our traffic path. Um, we got our application aware policies where we can steer traffic based on performance of particular links. Um, so I think that's, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what, what, what would be, uh, like just some of the questions that we hear from customers, why would a customer entertain SD-WAN? Like what would be a couple of the reasons? I mean, we talked about application control and, and performance. Well, cost savings is a big one, right? So that, that's the one you'll hear first of all. I and mean, we spoke earlier about, you know, MPLS and price per megabyte. Um, a lot of customers now are, uh, are looking to, to leverage, they, they still want that resiliency, they want that guaranteed quality. How do I get, I don't want to pay that expensive MPLS price. So um, having the intelligence and the reporting, what, what you know, generally what customers will do is we'll deploy it using their existing MPLS and internet connection. But as you start looking at some of the statistics, you realize, hey, you know, the packet loss is not so bad. And with these policies, I can, I can maybe have you know, two, three or four internet connections. And chances are one of them will be at least as good as my traditional MPLS, so at any point in time. So, you know, eventually you realize, hey, I'm, I've set up these policies and actually it's not even using the MPLS, it's using the internet. So obviously we can get rid of that expensive MPLS circuit. So that's a big driver. Okay, uh, so, so essentially what, I, what I'm hearing is, is you get the, uh, you could have multiple transports, you could leverage them all, and you could leverage policies to ensure that 
traffic goes over the only the transports in which meet the required SLA or the requirements of that of that app. Right, you can you can protect that particular application. So voice and video. Now, obviously, once we pass it, it's the internet. You know, so you know we can mark traffic and we can sort of prioritize it as it leaves our device. But we don't really have any, we have no control once it's out onto that provider's network. That we're not paying them a guaranteed end to end between mm -hmm. our sites. But because we have multiple connections, multiple internet connections, and generally, you know, we'll, we'll recommend to customers to get, you know, three or four internet connections. It'll be even even that a fraction of the price of their MPLS because you get you know, you, you've got a you know home quality business. Are you talking about broadband? Connections? Broadband connections, right. exactly. Okay. Yeah, right, so right. you don't need to get sort of business quality internet connections. Just you know, an LTE is another option as well for okay. customers that don't have. Uh, don't have you know sort of ready access to uh, to internet in their particular location. Awesome. So yeah, so really cost savings is huge, and then operationally time to turn up that's that's massive as well. Once you know the heavy lifting, we still have to create our policies, but it's, it's kind of once it's done, um, you know it's sort of uh, done once and you know, away you go. So plugging in at a, at a branch site, plug in the internet connections, it figures it out, it gets the policy and. So from an orchestration and management perspective, you save a lot of time with this type of solution. Yeah, I mean, so again, similar to, you know, we've talked about cloud kind of managed, managed solutions. This is obviously cloud managed. So mm -hmm. we have zero touch provisioning capability or even one touch provisioning sometimes we didn't go into. But yeah, in in, uh, in essence, you can ship the, 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 the SD-WAN router direct to the, the site, plug it in, and uh, you know, your configuration's all pre-done. We push the configurations, the tunnels are spun up, and away we go. Boom, well that's Boom. awesome. Anything else that we need to add before we close it out? Oh, I don't think, I think off the top of my head, I think we covered covered a lot there. So We covered a ton. Uh, but um, I'm sure if some of our viewers have questions, I'd, I'd love to hear those. Yeah. So we can definitely dive in. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for giving us the rundown. Really appreciate no, it. No, anytime. Awesome. So we covered a ton today. We covered uh, MPLS, we covered DMVPN, we covered the differences between those two technologies. We also covered SD-WAN, the benefits, why you'd want it. Talked a little bit about the architecture behind Viptela and just the idea of SD-WAN, why customers are looking at it. If you have any questions, suggestions, make sure you let us know. Make sure you like, subscribe, and if there's something you want us to do, we'll do it for you. Thanks for watching.